is oh all right so we we start looking at money and banking you know nations of money we look at characteristics of money the uses of money how to measure money we look at the concepts of money supply and the islm and things that talk about government creates money also in the government yeah just go over some talk about okay mm -hmm. so now most of the times we can ask people to find that and they'll give us different definitions of money right to try to define yes. money in different ways but most of the times we national money is derived from the functions of money. You can identify the four functions of money for us to give at least a sound definition. So we know that money acts as a means of exchange, the way of exchange. Again, money is a unit of account. Any money is the money is the standard of fair. Amen. Uh, money is the store of value. So there, if you want to define money, you would say money is just anything of value that is used as a means of exchange, as a unit of accounting, as a standard of trade, and as a store of value. So that is money. anything that anything that meets the following. Uh, following function that can be used for this function that is for money. Is that clear? Yes, please. We say money is anything of value used as a medium of exchange. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it's, it's as a medium of exchange, as a unit of account, as a standard of deferred payment, and as the scope of value. Okay. okay. Yes, because if you just say money is something that is used as a means of exchange, you find that there can be some things that you can use as a means of exchange, but uh, you know they don't meet. They cannot be used as a, so, uh, as a unit of account. Those same things. So you find that uh, some things can meet maybe only one of the two functions, but it doesn't meet these other. So money. In, uh, before money means these four functions. Okay. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Okay. So we, we we remember what used to happen money. Okay. We people used to trade by a barter system. We directly exchange, you know, the goods for, for good. You are making yeah. shoes. You exchange your shoes with the, what you want. So, yeah. however, you'd find that this same way of trading challenges. Okay, it had some challenges because it was difficult to find someone who can want exactly what you have. You understand? For yeah. me, if I want, if I want, I want shoes. Then I have bananas. I will need someone to want banana, and then I then that person should have the shoes and be willing to give. So it was some kind of dif uh, difficult. But with money nowadays, it's easy. Okay, to so just use money, even if we, no one can say me, I don't want money to get. So uh, it's, it's some it's something that is widely accepted. Uh, by everyone, accept by everyone, and just give them money. Then there is no that uh, there is no challenge of that incidence of uh, of likes and wants. You follow? I'm here. You can use money as a unit of account. So use the money as a unit of account. It means uh, you can use money to charge the prices of some goods. For example, you can say, oh, this pig, right? This pig, uh, you're selling maybe pig or something. 
sounds bad. Thick, eh? Okay, you're, you're selling some sausage <laughs> Hungarian. Yeah. And you're selling Hungarian sausage. So you value your sausage. You say, okay, me, my sausage is thin kwacha. Okay, I'm selling this thing. My thing that I'm selling is this value. So you can use money as a unit of value, like charging value to some goods. You can price, okay, use money to, to reflect uh, the value of some things, value of some services, value of some goods. Okay, that's what you mean. We can use it as, an, as a unit of account. Are you able to follow? Yes, I am. Yeah, so we can use money as a store of value. Obvious, money can be used to keep value, okay? So okay. <clears throat> take, take for example, if you want to, to move, you are carrying something very heavy, you want to go to some other country, obviously you would want just to sell, sell your things to avoid transportation costs. Take for example, want to go with, you want maize, and you want to move from here to go to a place where they do maize as well, they farm maize. What you can do is to sell your maize and go to that new place with money to carry the value of your maize. And then you will do what? You, you buy your maize when you want. Okay. So you can store the value of some goods, some assets, okay, uh, into money and keep that money even in the bank. For some time, again, get with that money, you buy those things that you want again. Okay. Are we together? Yes, I'm here. So money is, is liquid now. When you say liquidity, liquidity is actually the rate at which you can actually convert money into, what, into cash. I, liquidity of anything or an asset is the rate at which you convert that asset into the first, the first place, actually the speed which you can convert that thing into, into cash. Okay. When you say something is liquid, meaning you can easily convert it to what? Cash. Cash itself is liquid. You get it? Hello? So, so I was saying that liquidity, liquidity, mm -hmm is the rate at which you can convert an asset uh, you can convert an asset into, into cash so how fast the rate can you at convert? which we can, we can convert an asset to cash yes how fast can you convert that asset to cash that is what so you can find that some things are very difficult to convert into cash they can take your time can just easily convert some things into cash. But other things, okay, let me, let me give an example to get it from this. Those are companies that give loans. Usually they, are, they have got some things that they accept as collaterals. And usually they try to accept collaterals for the goods that are only goods. Okay, most of the times they go for electronic gadgets, you know, these things that they can easily at least uh, convert into cash sale. Mm -hmm. And like you, 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 you get something as a product so that can take you maybe three, four months to, to convert into cash. You understand, right? Yes, I do. So liquidity, that is what it actually means. So what about the background of this modern? What about the background of modern? So you can understand that... Uh, those days, but but a system, right? But a system. That's how you are trading. From the very beginning, you are exchanging goods for goods. Okay, that is called but a system. Yeah, those those days ago, you know, trading has been there for for so many years. It has been there, but what has different? The way how you transact do the transactions, how do you trade? So most of the times, those olden days, people were exchanging goods for goods or services for what? Services is for services. I, I do this for you, then you do this. 
I give you this this good just okay mm -hmm. then uh, that 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 was the first stage okay the first stage was over was of of better system then with time we with time there came what now there came the the, the court action god okay you know, like the, uh, how would I say, commodity man. Uh, what used to happen after some time, after those butter system things, people started the, like the, giving value to some things or to some commodities and he use them for trade. Okay. For example, they, 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 were, they, were, they were, uh, at some point, people are even using cigarettes, cigarettes as a attaching value to use it for, for as a medium of exchange of value then after some time people moved into gold die eh? minerals this gold the silver i'm sure even during the time of when jesus came according to the bible there is jesus that came during that time people were using coins the money that we were there well coins but before then, before the coins, the value of, uh, of money, what we may call money, people had agreed to attach some value to some, some minerals. Okay? That way it difficult to find, had to go and dig out bed, mine. So gold, you had gold, silver, all those things. Right? So the, the most one that the one that had a lot of value is gold, followed by silver and these other other minerals. Okay. So now people would do when people want, want wanted to trade those diamonds, what they would do is see, they would go to blacksmith. You know the blacksmith, those people who try to beat metals into some shapes. So the blacksmith would do cut those minerals into some some small small shapes and and say okay this weighs such these pounds this weighs this weighs this this way weighs this 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 cage these grams then they would use those same pieces of metal for trading now yeah they are not as standard coins as these that have no okay it was just gold and silver oh i have silver okay. so it, it was very interesting in those days if you follow the, the the history of money what used to happen was uh since the gold was very difficult to carry it was heavy before the, the blacksmith guys started beating the gold into the small small shapes it was very heavy to carry so people would carry you know, God with whatever things that lose. then they leave those things to the blacksmith. So those guys who were beating God different shapes, they were like they were regarded as the they were serving the role of the banks nowadays, keeping the gold people. Okay, I'm showing you the stages. So what used to happen now is that these guys would leave the would leave the the, the gold, yeah and the minerals there and after leaving that the, that blacksmith would write would write some form of letter uh, some some writing it used to be oh i owe you okay you're following right yes i'm following yes i owe you and i owe you was just some piece of writing that a blacksmith would issue to this uh, this person who has saved or was uh, left their god and then that person now would carry the IOU, that paper, and use it now for whatever they want to buy. When they want to buy something, they just show, okay, look, I have God. The writing is here. So you, if you want God and give you, they started exchanging those papers. You're following the transaction, the way how they started exchanging only those papers. But the problem was the blacksmith guys, <laughs> They started the, they started the misbehaving. This is how it was. 
they started doing it in what they started issuing they started issuing more papers those i owe you papers they were not reflecting the true value of the gold that they had okay okay yes so what they would do issue maybe they would do issue a lot of guys those were just papers you know they issue a lot of papers i owe you they give you i owe you they give you i owe you they give you what used to happen is that they say i owe you they give you that paper you, you remain with that paper they know that you are not easily coming back then they use that board which you have left to do other things i think that is the same behavior that the bank is still doing nowadays even nowadays mm -hmm. You leave your God, then they use that God to do other things. Then they don't actually have that God. So with some time, the bank, the, the, the government started noticing, started noticing that these guys are issuing more I owe you that do not reflect the value of the God that you have. What if at some point these I owe you guys? These people who invest, I would say nowadays, they, who saved, decided to come at the same time back and say, we want our, our God. Then they would find there is no, there is no God. Oh, God. That's how the government now came in to say, we are the ones who will be issuing I owe you. So the government started keeping the, the God, keeping God, keeping God, and issuing those. That was the evolution of paper money that you are seeing now. That was the beginning. So the government started attaching value to this until you have this yet money that you're having, which doesn't have any value. And this is still happening nowadays. You find that when you go to the bank, leave the money, right? You deposit. There is what you call the required reserve. So the bank will just keep, okay? The bank will just keep to meet the reserves, maybe 20%. Usually it's not usually more than 20% for each deposit. So if it was the hundred percent, what will remain in the bank? If a reserve, a required reserve is twenty uh, percent, it is only twenty percent of hundred, which is twenty patch, right? Mm -hmm. Only twenty patch will remain at the bank. Then the eighty percent, the eighty patch, is called a loanable, party, the loanable amount. So with the loanable amount, that simply means they will use this now to to give out bonds. That's why the banks use, they give out loans, but the money that they use to give out loans, it's not their money. It's the money that you go, you leave. They are savers, you go, you save. Immediately you leave your money, they use your money to make, okay? They use more of your money, they make money. Make and they know money. that you, you can't you make more money actually. They will even charge that, and it's very funny. They even charge at a high interest when you go to get the loans. Then if you deposit your money in fixed deposit account where you end the rates, usually my rates are my 8%, 6%, but very small, small rate. You just make a very small interest. But if them when they give somebody loan, mm -hmm. find that 20%, 30%, 30%, no, from your money. And so this is what usually happens. Okay. Mm. You've gotten the history, right? Yes, I'll, I have. I, I think I have I've even gone ahead of the thoughts. Okay, what do they say? <laughs> uh okay, there are four major types of money: commodity money, fiat money, fiduciary money, and commercial money. So with commodity money, this is the simplest kind of money which is issued. Which was used in butter system, hmm? used the, in the butter system where the, val, the variable resources fulfill the function of money. So, this is what I was saying commodity money, you use a commodity, right? such as gold, okay? Something that has got some intrinsic value, a gold, the silver, that's commodity. Then, he get money, get money, get <clears throat> money is the kind of money. Which don't have any intrinsic value, like this paper money you see, the picture pattern, like they do not really have any intrinsic value. By the by intrinsic value, we mean it doesn't have an, uh, the other use, the other use. Okay, you can't use it to do something else different. Okay, but you can use gold to do something, right? 
but for for for, for paper mining, apart from transaction, what can you use? Right? You can't use it to do something else. There is no intrinsic value. But if you give you gold, like a coin, my coin coin, one quite a for gold, maybe one thousand. You can you know that gold is expensive. Apart from just using it for protection, you can still use it for other things. You're following, right? So yes. kids' money is is like paper money that doesn't have any other value apart from using it for transactions. Okay. So now, judicial money, <clears throat> okay. This one, this type of money, today's monetary system is actually highly judicial. You find that whenever any bank assures customers to pay in different types of money, when the customer can sell, when the customer can sell the promise or transfer it to somebody else, that is called the judicial, judicial money action. So judicial money is generally paid in gold, it is paid in silver, it is paid in paper, in paper money. Then you have the commercial bank money. Obviously, those deposits start to give uh, to the bank. That's it. Okay. Commercial bank now. The commercial banks have got a, a lot of functions, and uh, these functions are categorized into primary, uh, secondary. So the primary functions are the following. Number one, they accept the deposits. Right? That's their duty to accept the deposits. Those commercial banks, Nanako, FNB, okay. They provide loans and party and advances. That's the duty of the, uh, the commercial bank. It's not the, the duty of the central bank, the bank Zambia, to start giving loans and advances to people. Actually, so the, the central bank cannot trade directly with the, the citizens. Instead, it, it doesn't do that. It trades the, with the commercial banks. Okay. You are following, right? Eh? Yes, I am. Okay. The secondary function: discounting bills of exchange. Discounting bills of exchange. So, it is it, it is actually a written agreement. Acknowledging the amount to be paid against the goods purchased at a given point of time in the future. A written agreement that acknowledges the amount of money to be paid against some goods that are purchased at a given point in the future. You're, you're following, right? So, yes. this one, well, usually, it is usually called the yeah, the bills of exchange where <clears throat> you want to buy something, okay, but you are not paying right now. You are you're paying, you're paying in the future. So since you are paying in the future, the thing is that those people who are whom you are going to pay, they want to sure it, right? They uh -huh. want sure it. You're not going. To. So the bank, right? You go to a certain bank, maybe your, your own bank. Your, your bank will say. Look, they will carry the responsibility. Okay, they will say, "You may want look. Can you give this person these things? If this person defaults, okay, if this person defaults, we are going to do what? We are going to pay on their behalf. Have you gotten that? Then they will issue that note. Okay, it's a bill of exchange. They will issue the note." You get that? Yes, I do. They over they they give over okay overdraft facility. You know when you overdraw, uh, that is drawing drawing more than have your bank account. You can only do that special bank. Yes, they do purchasing and selling of securities. So bank offers you with the facility of selling and buying of what securities uh, such as uh, stocks. Uh, you know, shares, those things, those are security that we talk, talk about. Okay, the ventures. Is that okay? Yes, it is. How do you now 
measure money. You know, money exists in two, I would say, three forms, three major forms, I would say, the measurements of money. So there is what we call the narrow money, which is the money one, okay? Money one, M1, money one. This money one is known as the item narrow money. It just includes the 100% liquid deposit, which is very narrow in definition of supply. So money one just has the, the currency that is held by the public, which man, the money that you have as the public. Remember, this is macroeconomics. You are looking at the aggregate economy. The total money, cash, cash money you have as a public, then plus the demand deposits with the banks that you have, plus the other, the other deposits, okay? The other deposits, okay? That you have, the other deposits with central bank. So there are some other deposits that are there with central bank, plus the demand deposit that you have, the banks, plus the currency that you have. When you total all that, that makes up money one, money one. They have high liquid assets or deposits. High liquid, I've already explained, can easily get the cash. Did you get that? Yes. Yes. So we look at different types of deposits. Obviously, there's current deposit, fixed deposit, account, jobs, things. You already have an idea there of money too. Money too. Money two is an addition of money one, like money one plus e, the savings account deposit with e, the post office. So money one, when you add money one, right? Money one plus the savings account deposit Ooh. with the post office, that is called the uh, money Ooh. two. Okay. So what are the um, <laughs> the, the components of money to say that it's money one plus it, the savings the savings deposits uh, with the, the, the post office okay. so now the, 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 what you should notice that with the post offices, they have no facility to open the current accounts. Okay. Instead, the common accounts that you can just have from post offices, savings account, the fixed deposit, and the recurring deposit. Okay. So once you add the fixed account, uh, the savings account, the recurring deposit, those accounts that you can hold in the post office plus the money one that you just find, then you get money pool. And uh, money three is called the broad money. This one is really broad. Money three is equal to money one plus e plus e plus the TD, okay, which is the time deposits in the banks. And this includes the fixed deposit, recurring deposit, okay, and the time liable of savings account. Everything put it together. It's, it's broad. So what happens is that money as, as a definition of money increases or changes from one going. The liquidity reduces. Okay. Money one is highly liquid. Then money two is including some some types, you know, some aspects of assets that the deposit that you can not easily convert into what into cash. The following that, right? So as you go up, we find that liquidity does what declines. Then you have that broader picture of what uh, money is. Okay, how the central bank measures what measures money. Did you get that? Yes. So we have money, like right? all money. So when you say money supply, we we are considering all that broad, all the money, not just cash. So we are considering all other deposits. How much money is supply? You also look at all those aspects of things and the broad aspects of of money. Okay. So now, 
let's look at the concept of money creation and credit multiplier. Okay, the money, the money creation, especially through credit multiplier. So you find that a large part of money creation is carried out by commercial banks. Okay, these are the ones that give out uh, credits. They're the ones that create money. So if a loan application is accepted by the bank, it will credit the applicant account with the loan amount. You get that? Right? It'll give you some loan. So for example, if you needed 200,000 to buy your house, so the bank credits your, will credit your account with that amount. And this amount will appear on the side of the, the bank account. Okay. To finance your loan, the bank can use all of its collected deposits, so short term deposits and long term. So, <clears throat> what is the summary there of, of what we're talking about? So, the, the, the summary is okay, maybe the take of possible. Awesome. What is that see, when you deposit the money in the bank, as I was saying, you do not, uh, you, you, all the money, you don't, uh, the bank does not keep all the money. Okay. They will have to issue out loans. And there's some money remains. Is that clear? Yes, please. Okay. So, so now, the central bank issues what is called the, the mandatory reserve rate, right? the reserve ratio. So what happens is that they say, okay, guys, for whatever deposit you receive, you have to keep 10 cents in your bank because the central bank has to control the behavior of these guys without the central bank coming in. These commercial banks can even give you all the money you give them for loans. Nicholas, they want to make. So, what did Nicholas. the central bank to, to avoid that? The, the central bank ensures that it forms a policy. Make sure that you guys, whatever money you do, there is a whatever deposit you receive, at least you should keep in the bank, not less than this percent. Okay. So, for example, now, if a bank receives a thousand kwacha, right? You give the bank a thousand, and then the reserve ratio is nine percent, right? It is nine what? It's nine percent. Okay, it will keep what? Nine percent. How do we do that? You say one thousand and three zero point what? Oh, it's nine percent zero zero what? 0 0.9, okay? So you say 1,000 times 0 0.0 at 0 0.9. You find the 90, right? So out of 1,000 that you deposit, they only keep what? The eh? following, right? They only yes, keep 90 kwacha. Then the rest of the money is the loan. They give it for loans, okay? They will issue so out, out of a thousand, you say they keep what ninety percent? They, they keep ninety percent. They keep nine percent. If the reserve ratio, just pay attention. The reserve ratio. Mm -hmm. The reserve ratio is nine percent, which means out of each deposit, find the amount you deposit the time there. The reserve ratio, okay? Uh -huh. The ratio, the percentage. Then that percent is the one that will keep. Okay, that uh, that bank. Then the rest will be given out. So the bank will lend the percent from one thousand. So they will make okay. more money. They will make money using nine percent. They only keep when you deposit okay. out. That is it. Okay. Nine percent is the what? Is the reserve rate? You saying that the, the bank is in serious business. So more money actually go to work for money as compared to what remains when you go. Okay, that's how it works. That's for, that's the message that you, we wanted you to get. Okay. Okay. 
Now, the central bank has got the following function. They ensure appropriate monetary policy formulation. That means they, they control money supply. When there is, a, there is too much money, they reduce money supply. When there is a little money in the circulation, they increase money supply, just like that. So in short, they control money supply, okay? They provide banking services to the government. Yes. So that, 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 that's what these guys uh, these guys do, the central banks. You know that the, the central bank is the only one that has the power to issue coins and notes, all those things. Okay? Yes, please. Now, the question is, how does the central bank ensure <clears throat> How does the central bank ensure uh, money supply, appropriate money supply? Okay, or how does it grow money, money supply? Okay, it has got uh, these three key. Uh... <laughs> Hello. I'm here. How does the money, the government control money supply? These are the instruments that it uses. It uses three instruments. Number one, it is the reserve, the reserve requirement. Okay. Reserve what? I have already said that. I've already said that when you make a deposit at the bank, there is some amount that is required to remain, some percentage. Okay. Yes. So what what the how the government controls money supply is like this. If, you have, if they, they, let's say there is too much money, okay, there is too much money, increased money supply. So using the reserve requirement ratio, what the government do, since they need to reduce money supply, they will increase this reserve. Are you following? Yes, I am. If they re, if they increase the reserve requirement, which means they have increased the, the money that should be remained because the reserve requirement So when they increase that money, they keep at the bank, it means they're reducing the money that goes in circulation. Circulation. Okay. So if there is too much money supply, what the government has is the central bank has to increase the reserve requirement, which means the banks will have as a, a, a meet. Okay. Then if uh -huh. if the opposite happens, like you have got it, uh, you have got it to money so you put for money in the source. What you do is now we need to increase money supply, right? When you have got little money supply. So we need to increase. So how do we increase using this element, this reserve ratio or the reserve permit? What they do is that yeah, they will decrease this. When you want to increase money supply, you in, you you decrease the reserve permit. So they move in an in an opposite direction. If you want to increase money supply, you reduce the reserve funds, right? which means you have reduced the amount of money that the that the banks can keep, right? You need to you reduce the amount of, which means a lot of money will be used as loanable funds, right? They will use it for loans. So we'll go into situation. That's how you increase money supply using reserve fund. Find with this tool how the government uses this for money supply, specifically the same. Hello. I'm here. Did you get how the central bank uses the reserve requirement to control money supply? Yes, I have. If you have, that's okay. Then you have open market operations, which is the second uh, 
actually second two listen to the way how this one is open market operations with the open market operations this is where the government sells or buys securities securities such as the treasury bills or the bonds right mm -hmm. okay so the securities uh, what what the government does let's say let's start with we want to increase money supply when there's uh, little money so we need to increase money supply if the government needs to increase money supply using the what the, the open market operations they will they will buy okay if they want to increase money supply they buy securities they buy the securities they buy the treasury bills they also buy what the bonds do you get that yes please yes so they, they buy the treasury bills i'm sure you know of the treasury bills that when the government when the government wants to get get money if the government wants to get money or want to give and sorry want to give to increase money they they they, they buy the treasury bills so let, let, let me let me talk about when there's uh, when the government wants to reduce money so that you get it well when the government wants to reduce money using this uh, tool, open market they say what they sell the securities and the bonds. Now, what does it mean to sell securities and bonds? This is when the government comes and say, guys, everyone who doesn't know what to do with money, who has money, this is doing that. Can you bring your money here? Okay. Bring your money here, and then we'll give you back your money with the interest. You're following? So they yes, say, usually they use the treasury bills the treasury bills are usually three months, okay, six months, okay, they're less than one year. So they will say, can you deposit your money for three months? We'll give you back money interest. What the government or what the central bank is trying to do is that um, you give the money to the central bank so that they give you that paper which shows that you gave them the money. That I could that form. Then them, they will give the money. So you will take the money that you have the central that's how you reduce money supply okay you you, you sell securities as a, as a central many people bring the money that they have to buy what to buy securities okay then you would have this what money supply when you want to increase the money supply you do the opposite you buy securities those securities which are sold now you be the one what buy from the people buy them Securities. Okay. Okay. If that is okay, we can talk about the the, the interest rates. Okay. The interest rates. You know uh, what happens is that uh, they they send the commercial banks. By the way. They also borrow, but they can only, they, they most of the time borrow from the central bank. They oftentimes borrow from the central bank when they go up. Example, it happens that they have best payment, they have given out loans, you know, they don't have cash. So they go, they want cash. They go to the central bank. So what the central bank does is that it charges these commercial banks for borrowing, right? It charges. Okay. So if the government wants to increase money supply, it will reduce this interest rate. Okay. So the, the interest rate it does what it reduces. When the government reduces this interest rate, like the rate at which the the central uh, the, the commercial banks borrow money central it reduces then money supply will do what we increase because logically when the the rate reduces 
what will happen is that it will be easier for the commercial banks to borrow, to be cheap for them to borrow from the central bank. So they will borrow a lot of money from the central bank. And you know that the commercial banks who use that money to give loans, right? We're sending the money to the population. That's how you increase money supply. And they do the opposite when they want to reduce money, money supply. When they want to reduce money supply, they increase this rate, in, which is the rate at which they, these guys borrow central commercial banks. So it becomes expensive for them to borrow. Therefore, they won't have a lot of money to give out loans. And if you don't have loans, you don't have money in circulation. So that's how they got, the, the, the central bank uses all these rates, see? these uh, key instruments to control it, to control money, money supply. Did you get that? Yes, I did. Yes. So when you say money supply, money what? This is basic uh, what we, the government or the central bank uses. Okay. I get them. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. Yes, I can get you. Okay. So the other key concept that maybe we need to talk about sometime. We still have time. Have a few minutes. We can talk about the concept of the ISM model. The ISM model. This ISLM model. Uh, simply means investment savings, okay, liquidity, preferency, money supply. That's the IS. So now the ISLM model, this one, it gives us the equilibrium or it gives us, it is basically a graph that shows us the point at which Actually, the money market is equal to the goods, right? the goods. Whereas the, the IS, the investment saving curve, is representing the goods market, the goods market. Then the LM is representing the money market. Now, the point at which these two have the IS. So, what usually happens? And the what the goods market. So with the goods market now we are concentrating on uh, the fiscal part or the, the central government part, okay, of controlling the economy. You know that the central government uses the government and the, and the taxes, right? Hey, you know about it. Yes, I can get you. They use government expenditure. They also use tax. That's a good. They can change this. Yes. So what happens is that when the government wants to bring the economy to premium, we try to adjust this. What is known as fiscal policy? This gives us fiscal policy, right? Fiscal yes. policy. Yeah. So the government will pay with this. This is a good market. You're controlling government expenditure taxes. So you are using this policy to bring the economy to. So by adjusting this, I think we talked about this yesterday, how you, how you are make adjustments using calculations when you're talking about mm. Then you also have got the, the monetary yeah. policy. That is the money man, the money market now. What you Central looking at the, the what the monetary policy. Okay, when you're looking at how much money has been supplied in the okay, we make sure that the economy is in you need to be mindful of how much money is in circulation. Okay, so you find that these two are are controlled by the interest rates. So the interest rates are always there as the independent variable to make sure that. It adjusts until these two markets are in what? Are in the LM and the IS. The goods market and the money market are in equilibrium interest rates. 
will be adjusting and adjusting to make sure that these are included. Should these interest be up above the equilibrium interest rate, then you have what? You have got problems. You have got more money supplied as compared to the goods. I'm coming. The goods market. Okay. Yeah. Hello. I'm here. I can get you. Okay, you you can get us. That's that's a good thing. So I was talking about the goods market. Obviously, the goods market we are still talking about the government expenditure, investments, and what is uh, consumption. You know that, that part of the GDP that we talked about. Yes, that's a good smart. That the equilibrium in the goods market simply means your income, your Y is equal to C plus I plus G plus NX, right? That's the equilibrium. Then equilibrium in the money market is where money supply is equal to money demand, right? How much uh -huh. money has supplied is equal to the money that has demanded. Okay. Okay. Is that clear? Yes, it is. If it's clear, let's look at the summary of this from this table. When money supply, right? When money supply goes up, right? If it goes up, even output does what? It increases. Okay. You know that why is the output that we talked about is the national income it goes up. Mm -hmm. Then the interest rates, they do what? They come down. You follow, right? The interest what? The interest rates, they reduce. When the interest rates reduce, what happens to investments? They will increase, right? When the interest yes. rates reduce, then investments do what? Increase. And if the interest the investments increase, uh, interest rates increase. Also, oh, when the interest rates re reduce, according to the ISLM model, what will happen in IS? This is your interest. Rate. Okay. If it reduces to R2, right? What will happen? The equilibrium point, you see that this. I L M will shift the right, right? When the interest rate reduces, the L M reduces the L M. Okay, meaning it moves to the right, right? It shifts to the right. Mm -hmm. And again, when the interest rate increases, the L M will shift to the left. The following. Yes, I am. Yes, this is LM is representing supply. Of, so when ma money supply goes up, obviously the the LM shifts. That's what I'm saying. The LM shifts, but the right then the quantity of money increases as well. Increases. So the quantity of money increases because money has supply. You followed, right? Yes, I have. If you have followed. You can also see that this is money demand, right? This is our money demand. When money demand goes up, it's too much demand. Even output goes what? Goes up. Then the interest will go up. What will happen? The LM will shift to the, right, to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So this graph. Money demand uh, goes up. So what will happen? Out goes up, then the interest rate is up. Yes. This error was at equilibrium A, then it increases, right? When it increases up, what happened? This LM will shift. You have seen that. So LM does what? Shift to the if, which means money supply does reduces. Okay. When interest go up, because interest will go up, then the investments will decrease, then the supply of money will decrease, trying to uh, bring the economy back. 
We're talking about man. Okay. You know what happens from the practical when you have the interest rates increase. What will happen is that you are encouraging people. Hello. Hello. When you have interest, are you able to hear me? Hello? 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 No? Okay, I, I, are you there? I'm here. Oh, I thought you had gone somewhere. Oh. I had phone calls. Sorry? I had received the phone call. Oh, okay. I'm saying mm -hmm. that uh, from the practical sense, right? when the interest rates go up, people will be encouraged to save more, right? Because when mm -hmm. they deposit them, they will earn more value. Uh -huh. And that will read, when, when I, I said it yesterday, that saving is a leakage. In so when you save mm -hmm. more, uh, money supply will because that money you save won't be in the situation. Mm -hmm. The flood investments will be the solids because of the mm -hmm. This is what I was just trying to show you. So that's those are some of the adjustments that happen. Hello, hello, But the the the, <clears throat> the other one, this is the IS by consumption, investment, government expenditure taxes. It expects. So when the consumption goes up, even out what go up, interest rate will, interest rate will go up. When the interest will go up, what happens is that the consumption will go up, then the why go up, the IAC will shift to the funds. So whenever G increases, in short, we are looking at this equation: C plus C, I plus C plus B plus mm -hmm. nx as long as there is an increase in all of these then y is what eh? is increasing when y increases the s this is scale we shift to the what eh? the right okay whenever whenever you know any of these factors is in consumption investment or reduction in the taxes of course the reduction in tax because once you reduce taxes, I say that this way is why, isn't it? But if you mm -hmm. increase taxes, you're reducing that's what you said yes. So we're trying. So any adjustment in short in these elements, these elements C plus I plus G plus minutes, that will cause the shift or the movement right that of the what of the IS. If it makes this Y to increase, it will shift to the right. The right. But if, if, if it makes this Y to reduce, this IS will shift to the right, the left now. Okay. For example, maybe a decrease in consumption, it will decrease Y. An increase in taxes will decrease Y, right? Just as you saw from here, when taxes go up, T is taxes. Y will do what? It will go down. Interest will go down. If interest go down, expense at least will go down, at least. Then taxes go up, then consumption will do what? Will reduce. Your consumption reduces to increase taxes. That's, that's what it is. Because we said what you consume, you see, your output minus what? Minus taxes, isn't it? If you remove taxes, then what remains? What for you? Pay taxes. That's, that's what so if you have increased taxes, then we are cutting on the budget over. What you do? Did you get that? Yes, I do. 
day. So this is the concept of the giant ISLM, a very, very important curve. You need this, this is very important. So this is the shift in that we uh, just talking about. Okay. Morning, when I prefer to be a pink.